Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Exotic Wine Travel. I'm your host, Matthew Horky. Today, I am very excited about the episode that we're about to do. Uh, it's a fascinating country. We spent a lot of time there. It has a very ancient wine history and also a very new wine history, and that's Armenia. Uh, I have a lot of examples here. Now, we're only going to taste one of these today because this is from our personal collection. Um, let me. There's so much to say. Well, first of all, Armenia is interesting. It actually technically has the oldest winery in the world, the Ereni One Cave. It's the uh, archaeologically speaking dates back to 4100 BC. Um, but under the communist rule, winemaking was kind of eradicated. Armenia was left to just making brandy or cognac. And in the last six years, there's been a renaissance in terms of winemaking there in Armenia. A lot of foreign investment, a lot of uh, repatriates, basically Armenians that moved abroad and now are coming back into their homeland and starting wineries. And they're producing some marvelous examples. So let me show you what we have here. So first of all, um, I'll go by this one by one. We have this old guy. Uh, it's called Old Bridge. This is a 2012 version. This is 100% Areni Noir. Uh, this guy, Armin, only makes 5,000 bottles a year. He ages the wine in Caucasian oak, which is very unique. Um, the wines, vintage to vintage, were completely different every year. Um, we will do a special episode on this eventually, but I just wanted to show you this right now. The other one is probably, it is, the most famous and maybe the only known Armenian wine currently. This is the Zora Karasi. This is 2013, also 100% Areni Noir. Now this wine is famous actually because um, this is the third vintage of the wine, I believe. Hold on, one, see. One, two, yeah. This is the third, the second or third vintage of the wine. And the 2012 vintage, or 2011 was actually... Um, in Bloomberg's magazines for one of the top 10 wines of the year. Uh, it's an Italian-Armenian uh, guy that moved back to Armenia, has started this beautiful winery. This wine is fantastic. Uh, we will talk about it at a later time, too, when we open it. But this is the one we're going to be talking about today. This is the Armenian wine company, Tariri, 2011. So this is... 50% uh, Areni Noir, 25% Merlot, and 25% Cabernet Sauvignon. So I guess it's kind of uh, our take on Armenia's um, Bordeaux blend, so to speak. Uh, Areni needs those two grapes because Areni uh, does not have a lot of color. The wines are usually about medium bodied, so the Merlot, the Cabernet, gives it a little bit of a oomph. Now, the funny thing is we had this in Armenia, and this was Shireen's favorite wine at the time. And while it was a very well-made wine, uh, I said, you know what? It's got international varietals in it, Merlot, Cabernet. I want something more exotic, indigenous, so we didn't have it again. <laughs> and uh, Shireen kept bugging me about it for months and months and months. And I finally found one importer in the U.S. that carried it. So I ordered a bottle. This was $24 U.S. Dollars on the importer's website. And this is a fact-filled episode, but I'm real, we're real passionate about Armenian wines. Is Armenian Wine Company uh, was the first big wine company to kind of kickstart the rebirth of the Armenian wine industry. 2010 was their first vintage. This 2011 Tariri, this is their top-end wine, and this was the first vintage of Tariri. So I'm excited to drink it again and see if Shri and I actually still like it or if it was just kind of this enchantment phase when we drank it for the first time. So let's take a look at it. I have a book here also. When we were in Armenia, we were well integrated within the wine community. There was a local sommelier that trained in France. She wrote a book about Armenian wines. Uh, this is only available there in Armenia. It's in Armenian, French, and English. So it's actually really helpful. For us, because we are actually writing a book about Caucasian wines, and this has been an important resource. But I'm all over the place. Let's get to tasting the wine here. Hold on a second. So, funny, first of all, color's fantastic. I mean, the color's really, 
really nice. I'm going to give this to Shireen here. So, now, wines that are 100% Areni Noir are usually a little bit lighter in color, almost like in between a Pinot Noir and a Sangiovese. This one um, is a little bit more purple, violet in color, although there's some redness, some ruby accents around the rim. Let's give this a little bit of a smell. Shereen, what are you picking up? The first thing that comes out is cocoa. A lot of cocoa. Uh, there's some black sour cherry accents, a little bit of blackberry. A little bit of straw and dirt. Can you smell the straw and dirt? Yeah. A little bit. And plum. And strong plum. And strong plum comes on the back of the nose. So uh, I'm really excited about this. Before I actually, uh, I'm going to taste it first. Uh -huh. and then we'll... A strong, strong sour cherry and plum on the front and the mid palate. There's a tinge of vanilla, the French oak, subtle oak taste. Not a lot. Still a well-made wine. The only thing I don't remember about this is a little bit hot on the back end. I don't know what the alcohol. Just thin, I think. Just I mean, the alcohol, oh, the alcohol content's 12 and a half percent, so I'm completely fooled. Maybe it takes some time to get to the other. I still think this is well put together wine. I still think this is very good. Um, it's actually pretty similar to what I remember it. Now I'm getting memories of our travel back in Armenia. I rated it back then for my personal palate, 89 plus, 90 points. I think that we're still about there. Shereen, you agree? Yeah, it tastes, it reminds me of Randy, Randy cherry chocolate cake. Yeah, you definitely get a lot of chocolate accent, a, a lot of sour cherry. Like I said, a little bit of vanilla. Hold on one second. And the finish is about 10 seconds. Really, it's a very beautiful and strong finish. It needs to open up though. Ah, this is a well-made wine. Um, a, a lot of these Armenian wines, they are made from Italian winemakers or uh, American winemakers, South American winemakers have re-immigrated Armenia, so they definitely know good wine. They have a, a more international flair. One thing that was impressive about Armenian wines is um, they would taste them right next to French wines to see how they could improve and make better. So I think the future is very bright. The industry is very young in Armenia, um, and there's something to look out for. So. Oh, one story about these bottles. <laughs> it's just funny. I brought back bottles from Armenia and the Republic of Georgia, and I could not find a shipper. So what we did is I put them in a big black duffel bag, and I had to go through U.S. Customs, and I was worried that they might stop me and think that I have a bomb in the bag or something. So that was a story in itself. Um, check out this. There's only one or two importers that carry Tariri. Cur uh, Karasi, the, I know you can find a lot more. The Old Bridge you're not going to find here. He only makes about 5,000 bottles a year, mostly for domestic consumption. But we will do an episode on tasting that. And we'll, we'll be talking. I'm going to announce here on Exotic Wine Travel on this episode that we are getting ready to publish our book on Turkish, Georgian, and Armenian wines. So stay tuned for that. I think it's going to be a great one. If you like this episode, please share it with friends. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel, and I'll see you at the next episode.